So you've inherited a house and you've made the decision you're going to sell it, but now you're worried about capital gains tax. You know that loved one bought the house years ago for a fraction of what it's worth now and you're worried, oh my gosh, how much in taxes am I gonna pay? Well, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Stick around. Hi, I'm Annie Baker, a realtor here in Silicon Valley, and I specialize in selling inherited properties and downsizing seniors. And today I'm going to help you understand when you pay capital gains taxes on an inherited property. So the biggest term you need to know and concept you need to understand is the IRS will give you what's called a step up basis. Um, which is really the current value of the house at the time of your loved one's passing. So let's say your parents are, you inherited your house from the, your parents and your last parent died February 1st, 2023. And you've kind of been, you know, not sure if you're going to sell or not. And here it is say June, 2024. Well, you need to get what's called a time of death appraisal for the time of your loved one's passing. February 1st, 2023. And a, a good appraiser can go back. I mean, I've had an appraiser go back as much as 10 years to get a time of death appraisal. Uh, so you get that, the, the time of death appraisal. And that value is now what's considered your step up basis. So let's say your parents bought the house in you know 1968 for $52,000. And at the time of their death, the value was $2.5 million super common scenario here in Silicon Valley of California. Um, so now the step up basis is $2.5 million. Well, that was the value on February 1st, 2023. What happens if you've kind of been hesitating, you know, unsure what to do, just dealing with your emotions of your parents' loss. And here it is June of 2024. And now the value is say 2.7 million. So, the step up basis again, 2.5 million, and now you're at 2.7 million, $200,000 difference. You can use the closing costs at, you know, to deduct that from the capital gains, and you can use any things you did to fix up the house to get it ready for sale. So a good accountant can usually get that number down of anything that you'd pay for capital gains tax. Um, and I'm no accountant and I'm no attorney. So always do your checking with your local experts. But in my experience, this has been the case um, that they can get that number down. But the longer you hold on to that property, the higher potential you have for capital gains tax that might be a little bit significant. So be mindful of that. And from my experience, when you sell the house within six months of your loved one's passing, oftentimes the IRS don't, doesn't even need a time of death appraisal. They assume that the house is basically the same value and there is no capital gains. Again, check with your accountant. But a lot of people, a lot of accountants and a lot of attorneys just say the second you know your loved one passes, get the time of death appraisal, just have it to be safe and it's never a bad thing. And I know selling a property in the first six months can be a little much of a pressure cooker for a lot of people. So just to give yourself the time, however it looks, get that time of death appraisal as soon as you can. And just keep that in the back of your mind that that is your, the value that you will get taxed based on that to what the, the final sale price is. So you do it pretty quickly. Most of the time there's no capital gains taxes. But if you take your time, especially in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley area, values can go up. Either way you look at it, you're probably going to be inheriting a pretty big chunk of money. And that's just really a gift. So if you have to pay capital gains tax because you needed more time, go gentle, be easy on yourself. You have a lot on your plate closing out an estate. So don't stress too much. Just know you need to be aware. So if you have any other questions, comments, please comment below. I love helping you. And until next time, have a great one.